Aloha, it is time to look at another profound moment during an amazing trip taken by an interesting person. And today's guest I can really relate to. He was a freelance travel writer, spending time going places, pitching stories, and you never know when that big one is gonna hit. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Kyle Ellison. We're here in his hometown of Kula on Maui, and he's gonna tell us a little about a very profound moment when he was physically in Africa, needed mentally to be in South America. And Kyle, welcome, I'll leave it to you. Uh, yeah, John, thank you for having me. This is exciting. So love telling stories about it. Um, yeah, it seems like a long time. I guess it was maybe six years ago or so now um, for this one event that we're, we're talking about. Um, I was, yeah, you, you know, saying about profound. So I did freelance travel for about five or six years as a freelance writer. And, you know, you know, that's always been my dream, by the way, even when I was a little kid, I remember when I was 11, I would go to the trips on the mainland, and have my little journal and write, you know, little sketches and where we've been and everything. And I did you know, look at maps as a kid. So I always wanted to write about it. Um, but kind of in a way, the way you never see yourself growing, like physically as a kid, you don't notice yourself getting taller or better at a sport or whatever it is, your own progress. Uh, I never, re I had a few articles here and there, and I was doing more and doing more and doing more. And even though I kind of was full-time writing, that was my job, was I would fly around the world, I would write about things. It still didn't really seem like this was real. I, I don't know, this is just, I traveled, and I would write about it and get some checks every now and then. It was great. But yeah, it was, it was, there was this moment in, we were in Moshi, Tanzania, which is kind of the jumping off point for a lot of people who go to the Serengeti. And we were going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. When I say we, it was my girlfriend uh, at the time. Well, we were married at the time. My wife, Heather, and I uh, were there to climb Kilimanjaro. And we were in Africa for three months. And we we're going to go in the Serengeti. And for our honeymoon in 2010, we had done three months in South America. And when we were there, we did all sorts of things. We uh, One of them was visited Machu Picchu via climbing the, the Salkantai Trail, which is a parallel trail to the, the more famous uh, Inca Trail. And um, I'd pitched a story about that to a, a magazine out of Los Angeles and had written the first draft of the story. And we were in Africa and I hadn't heard back from the editor. Uh, I, I was kind of thinking, oh, it's weird, but it's been a while, but whatever. And we're, we're literally, we're in Moshi, Tanzania. We are loading up the Land Rover. The engine is running. We are throwing the bags into the back of the Land Rover for 10 days or whatever it was out in the Serengeti. And, you know, my, my phone and it was hooked to the Wi-Fi of the, the little hotel that we were in, little in. And I hear it go off in my pocket. I'm, I'm getting, I'm stepping in the back of the Land Rover. Bing! And I check it really quick because I know I'm losing service for the next 10 days. I'm not going to have anything. And here's that editor from LA. And she says, hey, hope you're doing well. Love the story. Need the edits by tomorrow. This is final. Uh, and it was a fair amount of edits. There was a lot of red ink on it. And he goes, I need you to change this and do this and whatever. And I, I don't have time. This is not good. And this it was a pretty big story. It was a multi-page feature. And and uh, well, how am I going to do this? And, and so I asked the... The driver said, okay, where's the last internet connection before the Serengeti, before we get out there? Where's the last place that has internet that I can connect a Wi-Fi signal to? And he goes, well, there's this village. It's about an hour and a, about an hour to an hour and a half from here, depending on traffic. And after that, we're just, we're out there. You're out in the Savannah. Okay. So I put on my headphones in the back and I sit in the back seat of the Land Rover and I just have to mentally transport myself, literally close my eyes and transport myself back to climbing over the Andes into the, you know, the edits of what I'm doing there in Peru. When I'm, when I open my eyes and I look outside and we're bouncing down dusty dirt roads with chickens and pigs and cows are walking in the street and, and guys are riding bicycles around. And then, you know, I'm having to sit there and focus about the details of Peru, about the cloud forests of what the banana trees look like as the mists are coming in. And what was the name of that hot spring area that we stayed at on that third night? And it was kind of in that moment as we're bouncing I'm in the back of the Land Rover and I'm bouncing down the road in Tanzania and I'm thinking about the Andes and I got this story coming in and I'm working on going out into the Savannah and we got, we're, do I have my gloves for Kilimanjaro and everything running through my head. It was kind of that moment like, wow, I think you might actually be a travel writer. Like this feels kind of weird. This feels, this feels cool. So there was, uh, it just kind of hit me right then. Like, this is what I always wanted. Let's to be bouncing down, yeah, bouncing down a dirt road on deadline in the back <laughs> of somewhere. But it, it yeah. And, and like you were just saying, though, you have to be in, in physically you're in one place, mentally you're in another place. But often there's there's a third dimension, right? Because while you're 
thinking about the story right in front of you, writing about one in the past, but you're also pitching things that are coming ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people who are travel writers full time as their job is what they do. Exactly that. You, you've just gone on a trip. You're filing that story. You're doing the edits. You have all of your notes that you've taken. You have your photos that you're pouring over and going through. Uh, so you're mentally somewhat in the past of the story that you're working on, but you're likely also in the present of somewhere where you are also taking notes for a story or just the logistics, the day to day, and you know, actually trying to enjoy the place as well while you're there. Um, and then also you more than likely are lining up your next, what's the next place you're going to after this? Are there visa requirements? What is the, you know, the people that you're staying, the hotel, what's your flight? What's the story? Well, who are you pitching it to? And so you're, you're, yeah, you're simultaneously in the past, the present and the future <laughs> all at the same time. So let me ask you though, I, I've seen all the places you've been mm -hmm. and there definitely had to be a couple times where you were out of Wi-Fi and you missed that big story. Did that happen to you? We all seem to have a lot of hits and misses in the course of doing this. You know, am amazingly, I've gotten pretty lucky on not ha not having come back to, you know, 10 days out in the field somewhere. And then you come back and you see at least one or two of, you know, going, this was, I can't believe that I missed that. Amazingly, nothing too bad. A few things here and there, but I guess you go, well, you know, at, I, you can only do so much. You know, if you're out in the mountains somewhere, it's, you can only do so much. Looking at everywhere yeah. you went, one thing that intrigued me was uh, your experiences in Nepal. Can you, can you do a brief recount on a, on a profound moment there? Yeah, so uh, I flew over to Nepal on assignment. That was one where I was actually on assignment for a story. Uh, my wife did not come with me on that one uh, to trek the Annapurna Sanctuary Trail in Nepal. And... This is one of those multi-day treks. You know, the thing about Nepal is they call it tea house treks because you're staying in tea houses each night. You know, you're not actually backpacking and, and setting up camp each night. So it's very approachable and user-friendly from that standpoint. But you still are walking many miles a day at very high altitude. And so you want to try to, you know, make your pack as light as you can, I suppose. You know, you are walking a bunch. And it was just kind of funny on that one because everyone else in my group has, you know, three pairs of... of microfiber leggings that they can cram into one tiny little bag and all your backcountry lightweight stuff you're supposed to do in your backpack. And I'm clunking around this big, heavy old laptop of mine that I've got in the, the backpack. And the whole way along, I'm, you know, we sit down for water breaks, I'm just taking notes and taking notes and everything. And uh, one problem there, though, is that my uh, computer, it literally froze. Not like the screen froze, the, com the laptop froze <laughs> because we hiked up. It was almost 15,000 feet yeah. and uh, the computer literally froze. And I, it wasn't until I got the, back to Kathmandu that I was able to get it right. literally unfrozen. <laughs> yeah. So, that, yeah, that was one challenge one time. Now, yeah. you mentioned uh, Heather. You've been married 10, 11 years now. Um, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Most of the time, travel writers, travel writers taking assignments, they dictate where the family goes, where, where the couple goes on their trips. Does she get any say in the matter here? How does that work? Well, I've been, I've been married for 10 years, so uh, that answer, yeah, she gets all the say in where we get. No, uh, usually, actually, we, the, the um, our itinerary and what she would like to do, what we want to do, uh, kind of dictates our itinerary, and then I'll pitch stories after the fact of everywhere we went. I also find it's fun that way because stories organically just kind of bubble up. You know, you're not trying to force the story. You're not trying to force what it is. It's just, hey, this is a crazy thing that happened, or we went this, this was interesting. So oftentimes, no, she dictates the itinerary and then I'll pitch stories afterwards. But there have been a couple of instances where I had a, an on assignment assignment to go. Um, and one of which was actually with our first child, Tanner, was 11 months old. We had an assignment to go do a road trip through New Zealand on the north coast of uh, the, the east coast of the North Island, which is very sparsely visited, which was kind of funny. I get out to this motel all the way out in Hicks Bay on the very eastern end, and we had to check in at the hotel, and I give the woman my passport, my American passport. She says, oh, we don't see many of you out here. I said, what, Americans? And she goes, no, tourists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's, it's like the road to Hana, but for 300 miles, right. you know, that uh, on that east coast, and it's beautiful. But um, that one was actually an on assignment. Though. So, so yeah. speaking of the road to Hana, we're not that far yeah. from it right now. Yeah. We're, we're here we are on the flanks of Haleakala Volcano mm -hmm. on Maui. And um, since 2015, you and Heather have somewhat settled here, and now you're raising three boys. Life's changed a little bit. Life's changed a lot bit, yeah. Um, yeah, but we, uh, you know, we haven't completely slowed down, uh, haven't completely stopped the travel. We still, you know, my oldest son, uh, all three of my boys have passports, even the baby who, uh, he's 15 months now, but when he was three months old, he had a passport. 
flew to Ireland with him when he was three months old. And we did do a, a big two month road trip through Iceland and Scotland and Wales and England. Uh, when the kids were, I guess, four and four and two, Tanner's been to about six countries. Yeah. We're still traveling some, but it's, it's different. I get the feeling there's, yeah. a, there's a bigger plan here. You, uh, are you thinking of doing something that has to do with family travel writing? Or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we would like to. We're, we actually are. You, you catch me at a, a a junction in my writing, I suppose, right now, where I'm not currently pitching that many stories, and I'm not doing that much freelance travel stuff at the moment. I'm just relentlessly parenting right now, getting through some challenging years. But uh, we do have plans to start a new family travel. Um, family travel venture. I mean, we got the Instagram page and, and we're working on the website. Uh, it's called Go Outside and Explore is the, the name of it. And that's Love the it. website and everything. It, it, also, you know, growing up in a place like Hawaii here and having the kids here where we are outside so much, um, we're just real big on getting the kids outside and seeing, you know, outside and exploring and, and seeing new places, whether that's new places on your map or new places in your backyard, whatever, wherever it is. So, well, yeah. cheers to uh, what you've done, what you're going to do ahead. It's, uh, it's great. Do you have time to run up the volcano today? Or is the parenting call? It's not a bad idea. It's a pretty nice day. I haven't been up there in a little bit. Yeah, we've taken the kids up there a number of times, um, which is always nice. We always go a little bit farther hiking each time. And um, by, you know, they got the, the cabins up here, the backcountry yep. cabins. Well, they're, they're closed currently. They're closed now, but they're uh, One day they'll open beautiful again. overnight stays. Um, but Tanner, my oldest, when he was only four, he had just turned four. We did our first overnight backcountry adventure camping, just just he and I. Uh, Heather was supposed to come, but we found out she was pregnant. And we thought maybe going 12 miles in the backcountry wasn't a great idea when she was six months pregnant. Yeah. So Tanner and I went on our own, but he did all 12 miles pretty much at four years old, which is pretty cool. So yeah, yeah. It's not going to be long that you're going to be trying to keep up with them. So it's, it, that sounds he, like it's almost there. He's actually almost faster than me. <laughs> getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, thanks for making Thank time Thank you, today. John. Yeah, um, of course. My I pleasure. greatly appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, next week. We're going to actually talk about an amazing journey that was taken by a professional hockey player. He spent time with 21 different teams over a 17-year career. So for now, I say aloha. Until next time. Thank you.